We're going to talk about piecewise functions and the different um, ideas involved with piecewise functions. And then we're going to graph some piecewise functions. And so our first goal is to familiarize you with the basic ideas involved with piecewise functions. And hopefully our activity that we did with the cutting and the taping yesterday was of some help. But um, piecewise functions... Um, the following graph here with the red parts to it is called a piecewise function. Because the function is defined by two or more different equations applied to different parts of the function's domain. So, um, if you notice here, when we look at this graph, there is a left part, a middle part, and a right part. So we have this function that's composed of three pieces, and each is a different line over a particular domain. It's in a specific part of the graph. Note, a filled, a filled circle means that the point's included, and an open circle means that that point is not included. We still need to graph it, but it means that that value is not included. But as we look at this here, what we want to talk about for a couple minutes is the domain. And if you remember, domain means that we're looking the farthest to the left, and then the farthest to the right. And we're going to start with our left segment here. And our left segment, our farthest to the left value is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It is negative 6. And it's a filled-in circle, so it's going to be less than or equal to x. And then our value that's farthest to the right, and we're only looking at the left segment, is here, 1, 2, negative 3. And, I, and it's less than negative 3 because that's an open circle. Our domain goes from the lowest value to the highest value. So we're still looking at the two endpoints of this segment here. And our y value, the farthest to the left there, is 1. Again, it is filled in, so it's going to be less than or equal to. And then our highest y value in this graph is 1, 2, 3, 4. But it's an open circle. <laughs> so there's our range. We're going to do that two more times. We're going to look at here in our um, middle section now. What's the domain for the middle section? Domain, looking at the x values. Farthest to the left x value. Well, our farthest to the left x value is 1, 2, negative 3. And again, negative 3 has a filled in circle, so it's going to be less than or equal to. Our farthest to the right value is 1, 2, 3, 4. But it's an open circle, so it's just going to be less than. I almost forgot to do the range here. And on this one, what we have is our lowest value is 2. Our highest value is 2 of the y values. In fact, every value is 2. So we can say for the range that y equals 2. Every single time. Finally, what's the domain for the third segment, which is our farthest to the right segment? Remember when we do domain or range, we need to write from the smallest 
to the biggest value here. And actually, that's more for the range than the, the domain. Sorry, the domain is going to be the farthest to the left. So this value right here is farthest to the left, and it's at 4. And it is a solid circle. So we have a less than or equal to. But our farthest to the right-hand point is here at 8. It is an open circle, so it's going to be less than 8. On our range, we're looking for the lowest value. And here's where I was going with that. Our lowest value is this value right here, which is the open circle. It's negative 2 is less than 1. And our highest value in this right-hand segment is this point up here at 4, 6. So 6 is the highest value. It's less than or equal to 6. And what we have with piecewise functions is our pieces are graphed in certain parts of the graph. And that's kind of what we're looking at here when we're looking at our domain and range. Now, on example two, this one is a little bit different. Um, if you notice, at the end of our graphs here, we've got arrows this time. So that's a little bit different. But how many equations do you think we would have to have if we were writing the equation of this piecewise function? Well, we have one, two graphs, one, two rays even, which I'm giving the answer away, two equations. There's two parts. Two pieces, we'll say. The last one we had three pieces, so we would have to write three equations for our example one. So I kind of give that away there with my sentence. I should have been paying a little bit more attention. It says, notice that it appears to be composed of two pieces, each a different linear function over a particular domain. So what we're going to do here is we want to identify what's the domain of the left-hand ray. And the arrows are important on this. So when we look at our left-hand ray, what we've got is we've got an open circle at 3. And then we've got values that are going to the left. It starts at 3, and then everything goes left. So x is less than 3 is our domain. And then for our range of this, we're looking at the lowest value in this case. Our lowest value is 1, and then we're going to continue up forever and ever. That's what the arrow is. We're not going to stop. So our range is y is greater than 1. It's just greater than because it's not a filled in circle. When we look at the other domain and range for our right hand ray, Again, it's a ray because we have a starting point and then we continue on in one direction forever and ever. And we look farthest to the left here, which is at 3. It's a filled in circle, so it's going to be greater than or equal to because it's going to start at 3 and it's going to continue going towards the right forever and ever. So if x is greater than or equal to 3, 
our range, again, we look at our low point in this graph, which is 1, 2, 3, 4. 3, 4 is our low point. And our range is going to start at 4. And it's going to continue to go up and up and up and up forever and ever because of that arrow on the end. The first example on our page there, those were all segments. We had a starting point and an ending point. On these two, these are both rays. We have a starting point and an arrow continuing on in one direction forever and ever. So our next goal here as we move on is that we're going to make a table of values and we're going to sketch our graph of our piecewise function. We'll answer a bunch of questions to go along with that. So here's our piecewise function. Oh, f of x equals 2x over our domain of negative 5 is less than or equal to x is less than 2. And f of x equals 5 over the domain of 2 less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 6. So what we're going to do is we're going to start and we're going to make a table here. And when we do, we're going to put in these values here from negative 5 to 2. Negative 5 to 2. And we've got some in between. So if we fill this out here, it's going to be 2 times negative 5. Putting our x value back into the function wherever we see x, we get negative 10. 2 times negative 3. Well, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. And let's go ahead and graph this. Um, I know that we haven't filled out the complete table. But let's graph this part. Negative 5, negative 10. I can make this graph a little bit bigger. That'll help me a little bit. So, um, negative 5, negative 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 10. And negative 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 10. And 0, 0. 1, 2, and 2, 4. And I will try to use my line drawer. We'll see how well it works. So roughly there, we have that. I don't know. I don't like that. So there is that, but let's go back and look at what we've got. When we graphed here, we graphed negative 5, which says less than or equal to. So here's our point at negative 5, negative 5, negative 10. At this point down here at negative 5, negative 10, are we going to have an open circle or a closed circle? And we're going to have a closed circle because it says negative 5 is less than or equal to. When we have an equal to, that circle needs to be filled in. Well, the other point here, x is less than 2, that's our last value here, is 2, 4. Are we going to have an open circle or a closed circle at this point of 2, 4? Well, again, what it says, it says x is less than 2. So you can erase if you prefer, but because there's no equal to, this point right there needs to be an open circle. So I just draw an open circle around there. You can erase if you want to make it an open circle. And what we just graphed so far is our first piece of our function. So now, the second piece. We've got five. Well, 
for some of us, we talked about this yesterday, 5 is the same thing as 5 plus 0x. So it doesn't matter what we put in here for x. Every time what we get out is going to be 5. It would be 5 plus 2 times 0, which is 5. 5 plus 3 times 0 is still 5. 5 plus 4 times 0 is still 5. 5 plus 6 times 0 is still 5. Every single time. So once we can identify those values, we can go back and we can draw our second piece of our function. 2, 5, 3, 5, 4, 5, 6, 5. And once we get that second piece drawn, we need to determine on the endpoints of our graph whether we're going to have an open circle or a closed circle. Well, that 2... It says less than or equal to. There's an equal to. That's going to be closed. At 6, it says less than or equal to. This value is also going to be closed. So I've kind of gone out of order here. We've got some questions to answer based on what we've got here. We've done problem number 1. Graph the order pairs from our table to hand sketch the graph of the piecewise function. How many pieces do we have and why? Two pieces. We've got our blue piece and our green piece. Two pieces because there are two equations. We have the equation of y equals 2x. We have the equation of y equals 5. For f of x equals 2x, f of x equals 5. On our graph here, are these pieces, are these pieces segments or are they rays? They're both going to be segments. They are segments. Because there is a starting point segments because there is a starting point. Should have just kept writing. At the end, an ending point. On each piece. We don't have arrows at the end. Another way to think about it. So are all the endpoints solid dots or open dots or some of each? Well, Tiffany, some of each. Most of them are solid, but one of them is not. So we've got some of each. And then I wonder what we can say about those. Well, some of each, because the domain has less than or equal to or greater than or less than 
but greater than, which means open circle. And I'll squeeze this in less than or equal to greater than or equal to means filled in circle. We've got both. Were all of these values necessary for us to graph the piecewise function? <laughs> or could we have could we have graphed this using less points? I put probably less. I tend to be a more is better kind of person. But probably less. We don't we didn't need all of them. I think that it gave us a good, accurate picture, however. So, which x values were critical to include? Well, if we go back and look at our domain, the most critical to include were negative 5, 2, 2, and 6. And I'm going to write that 2 twice. Negative 5, 2, 2 and 6. And number 7 will get our reasoning behind that. So can you generalize which values, x values, are essential to input into your table to make a hand sketch graph of the piecewise linear function? Well, it's the endpoints. of the domain. They are a must. We have to have. So one more here to finish to get a little bit of more practice here before I um, set you on your own to practice. And this time, we didn't give you quite as much information. We gave you a table, but we have to figure out what goes in the table. And the thing that you have to understand is, if you look at my table on my notes, it might not be the same as yours. But some things have to be the same. So if we think of what we were just writing on our last two parts of our kind of theory in the previous page, it says, now graph this piecewise function by completing the table for the piecewise function. Well, the absolute least here is that we need to do negative 8 and 1 for our first piece. The negative 8 came from here, and the 1 came from here. Came from our domain. But we also need to graph 1 and 7. Again, those values came from the domain. 1 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 7. And I left a space in between, and if you looked at my paper, I graphed way more than that. But this is the very least that we could graph, because it goes back to something that you learned early on in geometry, which is that two points determine a line. So if you are just going to do these values, you really want to use your straight edge to help. So why did we choose these values that we placed in the table? Because they're the endpoints of the domain. That's why we chose them. So if we go back here and we figure out what goes in this table, we're going to put negative 8 back in for x. Negative 8 plus 3 is negative 5. 
We can also put 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. Let's go ahead and do the rest. We've got 10 minus 2 times 1, which is 10 minus 2, which is 8. And we have 10 minus 2 times 7, which is 10 minus 14, which is negative 4. And now we're going to graph these ordered pairs from our table to sketch the graph of the function. Well, negative 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 8, negative 5. And 1, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. We'll go back and look at the filled in dots or solid dots in a minute. But now use your straight edge as I will try to do on mine. I don't know where that came from. There's it for peace. So now, let's, before we graph the other piece of the function, determine. At negative 8, this point, negative 8, negative 5, are we going to have an open circle or a closed circle? Well, it says negative 8 is less than or equal to. We're going to have closed. But at 1, 4, our other endpoint, it says x is less than 1. There's no equals there. So that was going to be an open circle. Now let's get our other piece. 1, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. One eight. And 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And again, let's use our straight edge. To draw our segment there. And once we do, we need to decide what kind of endpoints are going to be here. At 1, 8, the first value that we graph, 1, 8, it says 1 is less than or equal to. So that one is going to be a solid circle. When we get down here to 7, negative 4, it says x is less than or equal to 7. This one as well. It's going to be a solid circle. And there's our piecewise function. So now, if we answer our remaining questions, number three says, how many pieces of your graph do we have? Two. Why do we have two? Two pieces. Two equations. Are our pieces segments or arrays? They're segments. Do you know why? Segments. starting point and an ending point. Are all the endpoints filled in circles or open circles or some of each? Well, we've got one open circle, so we've got some 
Tapi And was it necessary to evaluate both pieces of the function for the x value 1? Well, if you think back, the essential points here, um, if we go back to this number 7 here before we answer number 6, is which values were critical? Well, negative 8 and 1, but then we did... 1 and 7, those were critical because they are the endpoints of the segments. So was it necessary? Yes. Yes. One was part of both domains. 